Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about the creative spaces because there are a lot of functions that can make your life a lot easier in the creative spaces and a lot of people don't seem to know about them. But before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So as usual, the very first thing you need to do is of course to unlock the creative spaces. Then you come to the Ryukyu device, go to creative spaces and go to your creative space. And then you can select which creative space you wanna to go to. Now you can have a maximum of three. However, the third space over here will cost you AC. You do not get this for free as premium. If you're a premium member, you get the second island. If you're a free to play member, you only get one island, all right? So we're gonna head over to my premium island over here. All right, so over here is my creative spaces. The very first thing I wanna go over is this tree over here you want to make sure that you interact with your tree in order to get your genesis points every single day because you use your genesis points over here to buy build parts so this is the free to play method on how to get all of these build parts over here in order to have more options so that you can build whatever the heck you want now don't forget you can also purchase parts with star gems as well um yeah they're going to eat up your star gems really really quickly even though there is a 40 percent discount on the star gem shop right now it's still going to eat through your star gems very 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 quickly as you can see i'm at 6399 i was like at almost 700 star gems so i've been spending my star gems pretty liberally um, just to get a ton of uh, cosmetic items so that i can customize a lot of things a good example is this bouncy pad over here i want to thank fantasy star for actually making this uh, little pad over here it's not actually water droplets it's like a shock absorber or something either way i'm going to show you how to make this relatively soon just hold tight i need to talk about a couple things first so the very first thing i want to go over is let's just say that you're visiting someone's creative spaces and they're trolling you you know they make a giant hole over here and you fall all the way down and you get stuck and you're like oh how do I get out oh I can't get out because it's a giant hole and there's like no ledges the easy way to get out is to press escape over here go to communications creative space and return to starting point once you click this, you're automatically going to be teleported back to where the starting point is of the map, all right? Tip number two, if you set a bunch of editors and your editors are trolling you and just like destroying the terrain, there is a very easy way to fix everything. All you need to do is to come to this panel over here and reset terrain. Once you click this and click yes and click yes again, it will reset everything. You see that giant hole that was here? It is gone. Everything will be back to default. It is flat. Now, if you want to reset the entire island, you click on reset build parts placement and it's going to reset the entire island back to its default look where you had that little shack over there. Like right here, there was like a little house, like a four by four or something. You get that and everything else gets removed from the map and everything hard resets okay all right the next thing i want to talk about is using blueprints because as many of you guys know i am not exactly the creative type so how do blueprints work first of all you're going to find blueprints and download and once you've downloaded the blueprint you can simply click on it and you can place it wherever you want let's say that i want this mini cafe right here poof and voila a mini cafe has been created i didn't have to do anything because all of this was pre-made and boom you know it was super easy to create something very nice looking all right, so earlier I did say I'm going to teach you how to make this little bridge over here. It's going to be very, very simple. You're going to go to your creative space tab over here. You're going to go to space search over here and under search C space number, you're going to type 2025 9690-7393 and you're gonna visit Modern Is That Kirby by Fantasy Star, all right? So we're gonna visit their house right now. Now, once you arrive at the creative spaces, you're gonna notice that they've got this nice looking entrance over here and I literally just downloaded the blueprint for this in order to use it for myself. And you can see over here, they've got a nice little ghost. Oh, Fabulous himself is over here as well. But we're gonna run over here to the giant Kirby as he has made the blueprint actually downloadable. So as we can see over here, this is the bridge or what it looks like. And we're simply gonna interact with this purple icon. So when we interact with it, there is the download design. However, keep in mind, it does require the parts. So over here, there are two parts, the modern chandelier, as well as the water absorbent mat. These two are SG items. You're gonna need to spend SG to buy these two items if you want this design. So all you need to do is click download design. This menu is gonna pop up. You can save up to 20 different designs. And as you can see over here, I've already saved it on the fifth slot Japanese modern bridge. All you're gonna do is click on it, say yes, 
and boom, the design is now downloaded. So once you've downloaded the design, you can now place it in your personal quarters as long as you have all of the parts. However, we want to build a little bit more than just a bridge. So again, we're going to go to communications, creative spaces, and I'm gonna visit another friend's place. Over here at Himiko's place, their code is 4277-2638-0632. All right, so we're gonna go visit their space right now. So now that we're at their house, this is where I recorded yesterday's video about their gigantic shrine, but they've added a little bit more and they've opened some stuff for the public. So we're gonna run all the way to the back and you can see right here, you can actually download their Tori gate over here. So when you go to confirm area settings, it shows you what the design looks like and you can see it is this Tori gate. So let's say that we wanna download it, right? Then again, we're just gonna go to download design. However, when I click on the seventh slot right here, it's gonna say that, oh, you don't have this part. You're gonna to need to spend 3,500 Genesis points in order to purchase this part. Are you okay with that? So I'm not gonna purchase it because I don't have enough Genesis points because I've been spending mine like crazy. So you can see over here that even though I downloaded the design, when I try to place this in my personal quarters, it will be missing this part. So it's literally just gonna place these two poles and this entire top part is gonna be missing because I don't have that part. So maybe I'll come back later when I have enough Genesis points in order to purchase this part but there's more so let's say that I want walls so they've designed a nice Japanese looking wall over here so if I want corners I can download this one but again you can see that it's going to require two additional parts that I don't have such as the fancy wood deck as well as the ale exterior wall so when I click on download let's override the Tori gate you're going to see this design contains unbound build parts and cannot be purchased with Genesis points or star gems the reason for this is because the fancy wood deck is part of an A C pack item which you're not able to just purchase right off the bat. So what I'm going to need to do in order to bypass this is I need to go to the player shop, buy the fancy wood deck, and then I'll be able to download this blueprint and use it. And now they've also added another one. Let's say that you want a straight wall. It's exactly the same. You can see right here it costs the same things. So again, it's going to require the fancy wood deck. However, it does use different parts over here. So when I download over here, let's say that I want to save it over the Tory gate, it's going to say that, oh, you need the exterior wall, which is going to cost 750 you're going to need the triangular exterior wall cost another 1750 as well as the triangular exterior wall b which is another 1750 so you're going to need to make sure that you have the genesis points in order to purchase all of this stuff so that you can download the blueprint and actually use it all right However, even if you are missing some parts and you just force download the blueprint over here, you're still able to actually use it. So you can see over here that I downloaded this corner over here. Let us head back to my own creative spaces. So go to my creative space. Let's go back to my island over here. And we're going to use the blueprint that we just downloaded. So here we are back at my personal quarters or creative spaces. And let's say that uh, we want to place a wall around this house, for example, right? So we're gonna go into builder mode. We're gonna fly up here a little bit, get some elevation and go over here and download the wall segment corner. So you can see that, hey, it looks pretty good. You know, we've got the corner and everything. We can, uh, let's rotate this a little bit. So let's rotate that this way. Okay, good. So let's place this like right here, right? For example. So when we place it over here and let me uh, get out of creative mode, you're gonna notice some parts are missing because I don't have the parts. So it places what you have and what you're missing, it just doesn't show, you know, because you don't own it. So in my case, I'm missing the fancy wooden deck as well as the ale exterior wall, which is why it looks kind of janky right now. You know, you're kind of missing like <laughs> an entire part of the wall. So this is what happens if you don't own certain parts of the blueprint, all right? So we're simply gonna delete that, get that out of the way. But what we're gonna do over here is we're actually gonna extend this little bridge. So let's say that we want to extend this little bridge. So let us first delete this uh, this park over here, the, those fountains. And then we come over here and then we come back to our Japanese modern bridge. You can see that I own all the parts, so it's going to be fine. And then again, we're going to need to rotate this a bit. So uh, let's rotate that so that it's straight. Nope, there we go. And uh, we're going to come here, make sure that it attaches and boom, see? So now when we exit the build mode, you can see that we have extended the bridge. So now it looks very, very nice. All right. Future Care over here, I forgot to mention that in order to download a blueprint, the creator themselves need to allow you to download their blueprint. So let's say that you've created a masterpiece and you don't want anyone to steal it. 
Just don't make a blueprint of it and people won't be able to steal your work. However, if you want to share your work and you want other people to be able to use your parts, then you can make a blueprint so people can copy that design and put it in their own creative spaces. Now, the last two things I want to go over is how to open your spaces to public as well as hire more editors or enable people to start editing in your space. So the first thing is you're going to come over to this control panel. In order to open your creative spaces to the public, you need to come over here to change privacy settings. Once you're over here by default, it's going to be private, so owner only. So you can open it up for everyone, just like how I've done with my creative spaces. However, if you want it for Alliance members only, friends only, friends and Alliance members only, or just private, which is only you, you can set it to whatever. There's a bunch of different categories as well that you can set and you can place tags. By placing tags, it allows players to find you a lot easier. So when people search up the tag YouTuber, they're going to find my creative spaces very, very quickly. And you can also put a name to your creative space. So this is what you can do in order to make your life a lot easier and allow people to find your spaces a lot quicker. Now, the next thing is how to enable more editors. So if you want more editors to help you create stuff, then you can go over here to manage edit permissions, adjust other players edit permissions, click on this. And then if there are nearby players around here, you can enable it. However, let's say that you're going to bed and you're scared that the people that you gave power to edit to is going to destroy your masterpiece while you're not awake or not online. It's very simple. You click on nearby players and you select players with edit permission, regardless if that player is online or not, it's going to show you an entire list of the different editors that have the permission to edit in your creative space and you can revoke their privileges. So that way, when they try to come in and they're like, ho, 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 I'm going to destroy your masterpiece, they won't be able to do anything. All right. So this is what I usually do when I'm online. I give people permission. However, the moment that I'm about to log online, I boot everyone. So nobody has permission to do anything with my creative spaces. And that way I can, uh, you know, hopefully keep things a little bit more under control. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.